All right. What's happening, man? Russell, are you speaking? We can't hear you. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, cool. So how's everyone doing? Welcome to Biblical Gymnastics, another week, mm-hmm. another episode of uh of the show. Um the last one was last week, right? Oh, it was two weeks ago. Oh, so well, the two weeks ago, okay. <laughs> you know, you know, we're very consistent mm-hmm. with our inconsistency. Yep. Um at least you know. weeks. Well here's the thing, we'll be doing this now for how long? Two years? Pandemic. At this point? Right? We started at the p- pandemic, right? 2020. Yeah. 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 It, it might be time for, for for a break, man. It might be time for me to take a step back. What do you think? Well, let's see. Let's see. At the end of today's session. Uh-huh. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it might, might it might be time for me to take a take a break, man. Take a step back from uh we go gymnastics. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You yeah, know, it's just, you know, sometimes it's just being a, a place of like thinking of, you know, it's been a while, two years. Introspection, right? Although we never really released. Someone pointed out to me the other day. She was uh, on Apple Music trying to listen to the episode. Said, we only, you only have one episode there on Apple Music. I was like, yeah, we only have about one podcast episode. But we have so many episodes that we could actually turn into actual audio podcast, right? And put up there if we wanted to um yeah well we'll see we shall see um there it goes. all right so uh so how, how, how was it two weeks ago yeah it was it was brief and only brief only because um the subject of god is vast so we just wanted to just pick one portion and just dealt, dealt with that mm. so it was good it was good. Um, I think I just saw a comment today. I just went on there. Someone said something that was insightful. So I guess it was good. But the whole, I think, I think the main thrust of that was just to make you see the vastness of God is, you know, because we, we, you know, when, when human beings talk about God, we are forced to, to condense him to our understanding. So it's like, wait, let's, yeah. let's first step, step aside. Let's first acknowledge that we can't contain him in our knowledge. And that was kind of where we left it. And we were just talking about different aspects of the vastness of God and all that. stuff. So anyway, it, I, I enjoyed it. It was just something that's, you know, I, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. You, well, you, you're the one that was talking about it. So you better enjoy what you're saying. I, I, <laughs> you I, chose the topic. And, 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 and the reason was because, you know, the reason was because, you know, because it's like mm-hmm. whenever you talk about something, especially when you engage non theists or agnostic stuff, like, yeah. The, the concept of God for me, I find it mind blowing. Like, I maybe I'm speaking from a point of, you know, like I already believe in God, so maybe I'm speaking from. Yes. But I'm thinking like, even unbelievers, animists, I do every, mm-hmm. like, like that's not a concept that you can dismiss. Like, it, it, it seems so irrational. Anyway, anyway, so I don't. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I just. Yeah, well, it, yeah. it's 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 rational to dismiss it because dismissing that um is like dismissing humanity and that's why some people think that you might be a dream that you're not really here because you know once you have to deal with the fact that you're here and you're actually here right now you're making decisions you're leaving you're eating and all those things right and you're not just an idea and a concept you're actually a person then it becomes almost impossible once you actually arrive at that place to sit down and go yeah, but we are the only ones, mm-hmm. right? There is no other being in the universe, even though I know I'm here. Mm-hmm. Even though we are all here, we can all see each other, right? There's no other being in the universe because we have conquered the universe. But we didn't, though. We are a speck in the vastness of the universe. So you can't even say 100% that there are no aliens in the universe. You can't, you can't say, even you say can't that say 100%. For sure. right. Exactly. So, but, so for someone to say there is no is such a it's, it's just ridiculous it's amazing it's one thing if you say i don't know who i, I respect right or i don't know if there's god right or i don't know who this god is okay that's a more respectable place but for you to arrive at there is no god simply because you don't see him you know it's, it's such a dumb thing because you've made yourself the 
you you and that's the thing about humanity we've always been like this right we are the center of the universe we think we, we truly think we're the center of the universe you know there was a long time when people thought the sun revolved around the earth not that the sun is not moving you're the one moving right because you you're not actually the center of the universe in that sense um and 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 i think it's so intriguing because when you actually think about it that is the whole point you know everything's made around you nothing has life in all these places at least the ones that we can observe but you are this one ball in this place that has life and then you go oh no it, it was just uh, uh anyway bro don't get me started on that topic that's not what we're here to do don't digress Let, let's 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 stay on track let's stay on track that's not what we're here to do today so this is what we're talking about today so today we're talking about my fear okay so this is a very important one to me personally um and i told russell for this one i'll probably speak more and i'm going to address this stuff today now my fear just says my fear but if you look at it you can see it when men of god fall um now why this is important to me is that you know every person you you see here you know have fallen or you know or some depending on how you look at them men of god we're not blah blah it depends but a lot of pastors don't think they can fall a lot of pastors don't think they can fall a lot of pastors when they hear somebody else fall they think oh so terrible da 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 right they they look at it like they are immune to it. But so that's I want to address this thing for ministers, for every Christian, you know. Because it's not just about pastors, it's for every Christian. Um, because it's funny how a lot of Christians fall all the time in sexual immorality and all those things, right? But when the pastor falls, it's like, it's not such a grand disappointment. Um, but I want to say it's not just about the pastor, it's about also about every Christian. But in this case, today, I really want to focus on the pastor, right? and or the men of god um in that sense because not everyone may be a pastor or, uh, to be a man of god um what happens when men of god fall so you know what's now <laughs> for this topic russell I don't have, uh, you know, I have a few things here to say, right? But I don't have crazy notes per se, right? I don't have too much when it comes to notes. So I'm really good, just going to be sharing um, what's in my heart, okay? You still with me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting listening. Okay. I'm sitting listening. All right. All right. So uh, something I've noticed, as I said earlier, is this, a lot of young men or even older men they believe or even women believe oh i can't fall now why do they say this uh what gets them to that place wherein they believe that they cannot fall uh you typically find that it is it is a product of experiences right they haven't had enough experience to show um you know okay let's let's say someone that has never struggled with sexual immorality right a minister that has never struggled with sexual immorality in his life when you hear another minister fall because of sexual immorality that minister could go that makes no sense right or or you see that person was a false minister or whatever it is right because that's not something they've ever struggled with they've never had that experience with that thing They've never seen it. So when they see that happening, their response is, oh, no. You know, that must have been false. Now, I am here to say, and the point I'm going to make today is this. The fall of ministers or of men of God or of women of God can happen to any minister. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've struggled with or what you've not struggled with. The point is this. For men, you know, 
there are three major things that men and women in our flesh we typically love. Three. There are mostly just three. And what are they? And you find out that all three goes to the same one. They all have one commonality. They all have one foundation. But there are three major things. Now, these three things expand and become many other things, and they show themselves in many other ways. One, sex. Sexual immorality. Sex in general, right? Loss of the flesh. That's one. Loss of the flesh, man, woman. In, in our flesh, in sinfulness, we love these things. There's someone say, well, that's not really my thing. Okay, good. Number two, money. Money. Um, people love money. Even the people that are saying they don't love money, when you search on why they do things, you find out that they love money. <laughs> we don't like to believe people love money, or at least people don't like to put themselves in the place wherein they see that they love money. They like to defend themselves when you talk about... But then, all you have to do is to find out if someone loves money is this. Just ask us a very simple question like this. Um... If it was the will of God that you be broke and that you don't have any any money, right? You were in uh you had to be homeless. Are you comfortable with that? Typically, you will find people will not answer that question. They will change the scenario. Or they would make a statement like, why would God da da da? Or they would say, No, God cannot. They will not answer the question itself. When you arrive there, you find out that maybe there's something with me. Maybe I actually love this thing. Maybe I'm so attached to these things that I have in this life. So number one is sex, sexuality, sexual morality, or just sex in general. And the pleasures of the flesh. Number two is money. Okay? Uh, money, uh, we know that money also opens certain worldly and fleshly desires or doors for fleshly desires. M- enough money can open doors for sex so uh, all, all those things kind of work together right the third power mm-hmm. men love power women love power right so what you find is you find men and women they love power so we've said number one sex uh pleasures of the flesh number two uh what was that again money, money. the green bags number three power now, all three of them work together for evil. You know how to say work together for good, right? They all work together for evil, right? Because typically when you have power, right? You could probably you probably have money, right? I will bring money to your to your environment, right? Sex too will become easier to, to get, right? And those things because you have power. When you have money, enough money you can you can gain power. With enough money, you can also get sex. Now, sex is at the bottom of the hierarchy, right? Because sex itself is just gratifying to your flesh, right? But it doesn't always expand to these other two aspects. But it becomes, it, it's almost like a reward of the other two. Does that make sense? You have enough power, you can have sex. You have enough money, you can have sex, right? It's almost a reward of the other two, but they all work together. Okay, why do I say this? These three things are the things that men seek or are the things that in our flesh, our flesh loves because they are almost found foundational uh, to our fall. They are almost foundational to our... Uh, what's the word here? To our, our fleshly needs, right? It, like they're the basics of our fleshly needs. Now, out of these three things spawn so many other things. For power, someone will kill. For mm-hmm. money, someone would use some steel. So now, suddenly, you start finding all of these things, right? They all spawn all these other sins. But when you look at those three things, you find out that they're all together. Mm-hmm. Now, what do all these things do? All these things have one basic foundation um, self glorification, mm-hmm. self gratification. All three is for the glory of the self. So, from the glory of the self, then you have those, you have. You know, sex, sexual uh, gratification, as you said. You have uh, the love of money uh, in there, and then you have the love of power. Okay? Stay with me? Yeah. By the way, guys, let us know if uh, you can hear us well, if you can hear me well, at least, um, even as we go on this. Um, I want to make sure you guys can hear. So just leave a chat, say, hey, we, we can hear you. 
we're here with you um even as we go on this on this journey on this journey you leave a comment i'm 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 waiting to see the comments let's see if we get any that says you are both audible <laughs> we better be audible that'd be weird if we're not <laughs> but how does the audio sound is the music too loud is it is it enough um so just let us know if it's not so that we can uh turn the music down uh, or maybe just turn it off in general if it's not needed so leave us a chat we're listening i'm here before we continue before we continue okay it is fine all right great now what i'm gonna do is this i'm going to present to you and i thought that was me can you hear now oh i thought that was me can hear you now Mm. okay thank you esther cool so i i don't still understand why you say oh i thought it, that was me i don't i don't understand but oh, she couldn't hear me okay okay maybe cool. she couldn't hear you for a sec oh okay cool maybe she couldn't all right cool so what i'm gonna do right now is you know i'm gonna go through an article that kind of shows some pastors that have fallen and it's going to tell you what they fell or what made them fall, okay? As in what became the catalyst for their fall, all right? Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So let me see if I can share this right now. Let me see. Okay, let's do that. Share. So we're gonna. Ju- I'm just gonna share some of this. This is an article here from Ranker, and it just ranks <laughs> top pastors that have fallen, which is funny because and this was like a few years ago, so it's not even the latest one. So you don't have people like uh, Carl Lentz on this list. You don't have people like uh, uh, what's the guy's name in the head of uh, Hillsong on this Brian, list? Brian Houston. Yeah. Brian Houston on this list. So you don't have that. You don't even have uh, what's his name, uh, Ravi Zacharias yeah. on this list. Okay. So, we have this one that says Ted Haggard. Now, so let's run through it and we'll, we'll see. And I'll tell you why this, is, uh, why this is important as we go through each one of them. So, Ted Haggard says uh, it was an evangel- evangelical pastor uh, who ranted against the evils of, of premarital sex, adultery, and gay marriage. That is until he was caught in a gay sex scandal in 2006. A male escort named Mike Jones publicly claimed that Haggard had been a client for years. Not only that, Haggard had allegedly used crystal meth in front of his male lover. Ted Haggard was forced to resign from his church following his downfall. He attempted a form of conversion therapy and embraced his heterosexual side. His wife stood by Haggard during the scandal. As so of this time, he was age 66. Uh, this is uh, Ted Haggard. Uh, that's Ted Haggard. Uh, let me see. Maybe we can increase. Is it that we can't see it? Let me increase the size of this. Okay, just to make sure. Okay, now we have Jim Baker. Jim Baker. Jim Baker was perhaps the most uh, popular uh, televangelist in the 1980s. Though his wife, Tammy Faye, gave him a run for his money. That all ended when Baker was brought down by an enormous scandal that included sexual abuse and fraud. In 1987, Baker's secretary publicly accused the televangelist of raping and drugging her. After Baker resigned from his ministry, he was charged with accounting fraud and sentenced to 45 years in prison. Baker was replaced by Jerry Falwell who called his predecessor the greatest scab and cancer on the face of Christianity mm. in 2,000 years of church history. Wow. Uh, okay. Doesn't Jerry Falwell have his own issues too? I don't even know who that is. I mean, oh, yeah. name sounds familiar, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah, yeah, I believe Jerry Falwell is... Uh, uh, let's, see. let's find out who Jerry Falwell is. Yeah, 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 this is Jerry Falwell. It was the one with, with Trump. Okay, anyway, it's a whole thing. 
It's the whole thing. It was in charge of the school. Anyway, it was the whole thing. Uh, all right, let's continue. So right now, what we're doing is uh, we're just kind of going through and seeing some of the passes that fallen. Right, see why they fell. Um, as I've said before, the fundamental sin for man are three prong. Now it all comes into from one package, and that package is simply our self glorification, our our self exaltation. But we typically find that it's sex, money, and power. That's it. That's it. Those are the three fundamental things, you know, that men seek after. Sex, money, and power. It's very, it's very simple. Um, and you find out that when you have money and power, the sex part becomes a lot easier to get. Um, but those are the vices of men. And when I say men, I'm talking about men and women. I don't want to just keep saying men and women, yeah. so I just say men, okay? All right. Bill Gutter says, Bill Gutter is famous for his homeschooling ministry known as the Gutter Institute of Basic Life Principles. He promoted extreme submission of women and ordered them to dress modestly. Gutter had also was close with the Duger family and a number of Republican poli- politicians. In 2014, more than 30 women accused Gutter of molestation and assault, including underage girls. The allegations included sexual harassment, inappropriate touching, molestation, and rape. Gutter was forced to resign from his ministry, though he, surf- he resurfaced on the internet with a blog in 2016. As of the time of writing this, he was 87. I want you to look, look at the age of some of these men. 87, 82, 66. These ages will come to play soon now this is a whole different this was someone that was a whole different thing so i'm gonna skip this guy um mm, okay well, well let's look at tony Al- alamo like you know the with the way he looks right now he looks like he's uh, trying to be a gangster it's just it's hilarious but it says tony alamo rocketed to fame in the 1970s for preaching a fundamentalist interpretation of christianity when his wife died in 1982 alamo went a little crazy displayed his her embalmed body for months and claimed he, he, she would rise from the dead and only got worse from there. In 2009, Alamo was sentenced to 175 mm. years in prison. The charges included sexual abuse, transporting underage girls across state lines for sexual purposes, pedophilia, marrying an eight-year-old girl, and mm. child rape. Alamo's defense, he was framed by the Vatican. 87. Okay. Bob Coy. All right, so I hope you guys are still following me. And <laughs> of course, was the most famous evangelical pastors or no, pastor in Florida. He's fought, how do you say, Lauderdale, right? That's what yeah, you say, Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale, Lauderdale. Lauderdale. <laughs> His fought Lauderdale mega church had 2,500 members, bro, thousand, thousand. Bro, 100. oh, 25,000. Oh, sorry. I was even, I, I, ah, what an insult. Bro, may you get there in Jesus' name. I don't know, my guy. I don't know. My guy. <laughs> the guy's like, I don't know if I want it. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. The guy's I like, know I, about I don't know if I want that prayer, sir. Uh, I'm good. Uh, Imagine this 25,000 members in your church. That is insane. Yeah, that's a lot of people. What? Especially, especially okay, anyway. for the US, for like the US. Exactly. 25,000? Okay. 25,000 members and George, Wash- George W. Bush even visited Coy. Uh, but it all came crashing down in 2014 when he admitted to multiple affairs mm. and a pornography addiction. He resigned in disgrace, but the worst was still to come. In 2017, Coy was publicly accused of molesting a four year old child. Mm. Well, a police sat on the accusation for months and dropped the inquiry without interviewing Coy. Said the case is still ongoing you know I, the mom reading the stuff right bro i just i want to stop but i'm like i said i was gonna go so um, let me do it fred phelps founded the westboro baptist church oh oh we know that one right that was yeah. a whole different thing a fundamentalist yeah. ministry that became notorious for protesting the funerals of gay people and gay pride events it is classified as a hate group by the anti-defamation league and the southern poverty law center Phelps had a brush with the law in 1994 when he was convicted of disorderly conduct in 1995 when he was convicted for assault and battery. In 2009, the United Kingdom banned Phelps from entry country, but ironically, it was Phelps 
2013, excommunication by his own church that probably felt like the biggest fall from grace for the minister. He was voted out for having a change of heart about his religious belief, and he died a few months later. So that's 84. All right. Dave Reynolds was a pastor at Coniston Bible Fellowship Church in Sherwood, Arkansas, until he was caught looking at child pornography. Reynolds was 40 years old when the National Center for Missing and Despair Children found evidence that someone in Sherwood was visiting child mm. pornography site, websites. The culprit was none other than Pastor Reynolds. In 2016, Reynolds was charged with 70 counts of possessing of viewing child pornography. Mm. A felony charge. Doug Phillips. Doug Phillips was president of an extreme Christian rights group called Visit Forum Ministries. He was close friends with the Duggars and Kirk Cameron and an advocate of the Tea Party conservative political movement. Phillips argued that women must be completely submissive to their husbands and fathers. Daughters should not even have a say in who they marry, according to Phillips. And women should have as many children as possible. In 2013, Phillips was forced to resign after being publicly accused of sexual abuse and assault against a woman he met when she was only 15 years old. Several years later, Phillips had moved the woman into his house as his nanny. Or several years later, okay, Phillips sexually abused her by masturbating on the woman multiple times when she cried and asked him to stop. Ah, Jimmy Swaggart. A Pentecostal televangelist got his start on television in 1975. In the 1980s, he teamed up with Reverend Jerry Farwell Reverend James Robinson and Reverend Pat Robertson to use the Christian right to shape the Republican Party. Satan's agents are everywhere, according to Swaggart, and including feminists, Democrats, and rock musicians. Swaggart's fall from grace happened in 1988 when he became public that he was cheating on his wife with a New Orleans prostitute. Not only that, Swaggart was an avid consumer of porn and he experimented with BDSM. All were condemning such immoral acts. Age 87. Mike Hintz. Mike Hintz was a youth counselor at the First Assembly of God Church in, uh, what did you say, Des Moines? Des Moines, right? Des Moines. Des Moines, Iowa. During the 2004 presidential election, he was supported, he supported George W. Bush, telling voters that he would fight against abortion and poor. But that same year, Hintz was fired for having sex with a minor. Hintz, who was 35, married and had four kids, became sexually involved with a 17-year-old girl whom he had been counseling. Clearly, the reverend wasn't caught out for being a youth counselor. He got off with no jail time and 10 years uh, and 10 years after he was convicted. Got off with no jail time and 10 years. What does that mean? That doesn't even make sense. Got off with no jail time and 10 years. Maybe say 10 years probation. Maybe that's what they meant. Probably 10 years no, no, probation. No, no. He got off with no jail time. And 10 years after oh, he was convicted, he was because named I was like, removed. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Because I was like, for a second, I was like, what is what are you talking about? And 10 years after he was convicted, his name was removed from the sex offender. Now, some of us already know this guy. Robert Tilton was a televangelist based in Dallas and Fort Lauderdale, right? That's how you say it, right? Yeah, Lauderdale, Lauderdale. Right? Lauderdale. You gotta keep correcting me, brother. It came out in 1991 that he was running a scam where he asked viewers to send him prayer requests, promising to pray over each pray, uh, each plea. Mm-hmm. An inve- investigative report found thousands of requests dumped in a garbage bin. But not until the televangelist kept checks, money others, and cash for himself. Tilton claimed that his enemies had stolen the documents and planted them in the trash but no one was convinced mark driscoll now some of us know Mark driscoll i used to like him yeah oh uh, yeah mark driscoll founded the mars hill mega church in seattle in 996. um driscoll hipster brand of christianity i don't know if it was really hipster brand because it, it was more he wasn't. it wasn't really hipster brand it no, was more it wasn't it was more Calvinistic, straight up, he was, direct. He was, was very hipster direct. to the ultra conservative uh, Calvinist. True. Yeah, that's what. That's True. why. So he wasn't at all, though. Okay. 
Adriscoe's hipster brand of Christianity included calling yoga demonic and claiming the mainstream portrayals of Jesus made him look like a, like an, if how do you say this word? Effeminate. Efe, pronounce it for me. Effeminate. Thank you. Looking dude. And a neutered and limp wristed sky fairy of pop culture. Well, I kind of agree with that. I, I think that that's true. I think that that's what they've turned Jesus into. It says, when Ted Haggard was brought down by gay sex scandal, Driscoll blamed Haggard's wife of letting herself go. Chai. Driscoll was forced to resign in 2014 after a plagiarism scandal, followed by allegations of emotional abus- abusiveness and misogyny. He was also accused of misuse of church funds. Although he has a church in Scottsdale now. Yeah, he has a new one, yeah. Yeah. Joshua Duggar. Well, was he really a pastor? I don't think this guy was a pastor. Nah, he was just the just face a, of the... Um, yeah, uh, let's move on. Mm, Irish priest. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this. Ray Coil. What did you say? Ray Coil. Ray Coil. Coil. Okay. Found himself in hot water in 2016 after he was... After he posted pictures of himself on Grider, a gay dating website. Coyle also posted his cell phone number and described himself as a lecturer uh, rather than a member of the clergy. Although Coyle did not break any laws, Coyle's actions went against the Catholic Church's stance on homosexual and violated his vows of celibacy. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Um, and um, yeah. Okay. All right. So. Russell, did anything occur to you there in that list? Aside from why, is a similar theme for most of them. Okay, so what what is the theme? Yeah, it's one of the three. It's um, it's the things that tempt all men: lust of the eyes. I mean, sorry, sex, money, power. It's it's the same things. Um, that yeah. So that was a that was a theme that I was seeing. Okay. You know, you find out that the basic issue with most people, right? You know, and it's 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 interesting as well with ministries is uh, fundamentally like those three aspects are the three aspects that if a minister is gonna fall, is it gonna fall? You will fall in them. Yeah. The the easiest one to fall in is sex. Easiest. That's the easiest one. That's why you see more people are in there, and you find out that some of them, especially now in this place that we are in is you you find out that porn almost was a gateway for some of them because you find out that it starts with porn and even in the 80s you know and but porn was even easily available like that like now you know so and this is why you know the point i'm making right i am this is why if you look at the if you go on the channel you see it it says my fear or things my fear or or what i fear something like that Well, the flyer says my fear. Yeah, okay, good. The reason is this. We have ministers today that are addicted to pornography. Right? That's not even a question. Like, it's not even a question. They are addicted to porn. But somehow, it's almost like we don't really... Like, these temptations and these things... Because if sex is, is, is... almost like the uh it's almost the easiest to fall into mm-hmm. it will be hard for a pastor that is addicted to porn to say no oh to sex right yes oh yeah yeah like like yeah, if that's already your struggle then you're just a ticking time bomb basically. exactly okay there are a lot of pastors today that have fallen but they don't even realize it yet there are a lot of pastors today that are falling but by the time it is revealed it will be too yeah. late because the revelation of the thing is not when you fell. Mm-hmm. The problem is this, you hear about a pastor that falls somewhere in Poku. Oh, there are a lot of American pastors, and not even American pastors, pastors around, that have fallen, but they don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Or they think they can still fix it. Yeah. Right? They're falling and they're, oh Lord, I'm sorry, but they think they can fix it. But they don't understand that... It's it's deeper than just the action you did. Okay, so three things: sex, and most times what we know is the sex, right? A lot of the people we've heard about is the sex. Now another thing that we don't realize 
that makes pastors um fall even into that aspect of we, we you know said earlier right money power gets you the sex sex may not get you money and power right but money and power can get you sex a man that is put on a pedestal is a lot easier right to gratify your flesh if that is something you're already bound to remember if you're already bound to this as in porn now you have money you have power even though you're a pastor the devil will give you opportunities to take advantage of it there will be young girls that will come by there will be women that will come by there will be opportunities here and there you have enough you know Mm -hmm. Okay, so Russell, if I continue, I don't know if you want to have something to say. You can go on, please. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait till you get to another. Yeah, you're still okay. kind of building, so I'll wait. Okay. Um, so it's interesting because um, you know, when we look at the notion of of the fall of pastors, many times. There's something that's missing or we don't or we don't fully grasp. The more power you think you have, the more you think you can get away with things. Let me say it again. The more power you think you have. And I'm not talking about even being a mega pastor. You could be a pastor of two people in, in a in a place. Mm-hmm. And you think you have a lot of power. The more power you think you have, the more you start thinking, oh. I can't get away with this. Oh, I can do this. Why? Because you're thinking, you know, you're in charge, right? Um, in that sense. So you start making, you start feeling like things that are not yours should be yours. For example, Ravi Zacharias, right? One of the things I used to tell the young women, uh, especially the ones that gave him massage, was that they were God's gifts to him for all the time he has spent in ministry. I want you to realize how demonic that is. Saying that God's gift to a minister is sin. That is probably one of the most demonic things I've heard. Because it's like, it doesn't sound demonic, but it's so very demonic. Because it's like taking the, you've turned the nature of God into sinfulness. But that's what power ends up doing. You end up being corrupted or you end up or your corruption ends up showing and even the power doesn't corrupt you really your corruption ends up showing because deep down that's what your after is after okay russell there's a place i'm going to go but i want you to share before before we jump into this place into that place if there's something you want to say i mean yeah was, I'm, I'm listening to you and i'm and i was kind of waiting for you to keep building uh, because my comments more or less as to you know why and this is something that, you know, even like a few weeks back, uh, this is something that I was talking to someone about. And, and I mean, we, we kind of went in different places, but one, one of the points was I was expressing was just the overwhelming number of ministers who are fallen, like overwhelming number. And obviously we cannot talk about, well, what they really ministers, what the point is they're there and whether or not we think they're ministers is, is irrelevant the world as far as the world is concerned these people represent christ and the church so that's actually my main concern is everyone every minister who falls whether or not they are true is irrelevant it, it, in a in, in a way kind of paint a picture of, of the church and secondly how we, we respond to to them is also important you know because uh, i think it was like a couple of weeks ago just randomly apple news i think it was apple news one one bishop one pastor somewhere in the east coast here was raping some some kids and there's been so many it just gets you just get weak you know and it's like why i mean i, I we can explore why but I, i'm just kind of sharing like every time i see it and it's you breaking news so and so well not breaking news but some 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 sort of a breaking news this person fell that person is like why and then you just kind of makes you tremble a little bit but really it's like it's disheartening um and so 
and I, I think maybe that's going to what you want to really kind of conclude on so I, I thought I should just kind of put that out there and maybe as you get to the maybe the why or the the, the, the main thesis of what you're trying to get to today we can talk about that so anyway that well, was well I don't know if I have a, I don't know if I have any thesis though <laughs> like I don't I don't know if I have any like deeper message except just to say this is trash and to talk about the fact of like don't overestimate yourself and I just I really actually want to just well maybe you're right in the sense of maybe I have something to say <laughs> but it's like I really want to touch on um, the fact that this is not unique to certain men or women like this is man in general and when you start believing that it is impossible for you to fall. You have already fallen into the trap of the enemy. The goal is this, for you to understand that these are the things that your flesh wants and it takes, all you have to do is just keep feeding your flesh little things. And before you know anything, you're so down in the murk, you don't understand how you got there. And, and the thing is this, if you're a pastor of a church or a minister or even a brother or sister in Christ, you don't have to be a pastor, but you are in charge of a, a Bible study or whatever, I am telling you, this applies to you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. Because all it takes is this. You keep chipping at the edge. You keep chipping at it. You keep chipping at it. You keep chipping at it. Then all of after a while, you become used to your iniquity. You become used to it. You know, you know it's wrong. You want to stop, but you have actually not stopped it. So you are growing in iniquity, but you don't realize you're growing in iniquity until one day there's a great fall. Then, when there's a great fall, then you have people giving speeches. So I want you to see this. Let's look at the book of 1 John. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. This is why ministers fall. This is why people of God fall. Right here. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, we, some of us have read this passage before, but have you thought about what John is saying? Think about what John is saying. I want you to think about it. John is saying, do not love the world or the things in the world. Think about this. Who is John talking to? Believers. John is talking to believers. You will think that believers should know this, right? You will think, as well, this is the first century church. This is the early church. You will think, if anything, they would know this. But John tells them, do not love the world or the things in this world. Many ministers end up loving the world and the things in it. They end up falling in love with the women around them. They end up falling in love with concepts and power and all the things that the world says that you should be your rights. That is what's fascinating about this. The world teaches us that it is your right to have power. It is your right to have money. It is your right to have the most beautiful woman or the most hands. It is your right. Why shouldn't you have it? So we fall in love with this concept of it is me. It is my right. And ministers slowly start falling in love with the things of this world. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then verse 16. Then it tells you how you know. It says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and what? The pride of life is not from the Father, but wow. is from the world. You know what's funny? Brother, does this passage say it's from Satan? No. No, it says it's from the world. It's from the world. Because everything in the world is in alignment with hell. So it's saying the examples you're seeing in this world are not from God. The, the things that this world tells us to have, the desires of our flesh, that is what your flesh wants. What the flesh wants. Like what does flesh want? The flesh wants to be gratified with, with sin. It wants sex. It wants sexual immorality. It, it wants those things. It tells you, it says, the desires of the eyes, the things we see, 
the things we long after, the pride of life. Power. You want to be highly exalted. All these things are not from God. They're not from the Father. It says, but from the, from the world. When men of God forget this, 1 John 2, 15 to 16, they are most likely going to fall. The minute a young minister forgets this, 1 John 15 to 16, they are most likely going to fall. Because what happens is this. We start talking about the, the love of the world no longer becomes the love of the world. Right? What the world says is no longer... Like, we start taking those things and believing that we deserve those things that the world gives. We deserve those things. It's our right. Or we start thinking, well, you know, even though we know there's a problem in it, We fall in love with these things. Now, here's the f- question, Russell. I'm going to ask a question. Go for Excuse it. Me? Cool. Is there any such thing as love at first sight? Love at first sight? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You think so? How? Yeah, it depends on. It just depends on who's doing the "quote unquote" loving. Okay, love at first sight. I'm talking about us humans. So. Oh, well, us humans. Oh, okay, yes. that's difficult. Oh, I was, was going to use God, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Love at first but sight. It's not first human. sight. It's not first sight, though. God made you, so He knows who you are. So that's it's not first right. sight. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the, well, yes, love at first sight. Is there anything called love at first sight with humans? I've heard this things. No, it, it exists. Like people think that, but I'm trying to consider if. Oh, if so I Akin says we should bring that the music now. Akin, I asked you guys before, you said the music was fine. Now, halfway through the thing, you say bring that the music. So I think it's just probably the last track. Uh, okay. But to answer your question, love at first sight, yeah, like basically what the meaning that you see somebody and then, you, yeah, 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 yeah. I see it in the Bible. Okay, so, oh, you oh you see love at first sight? That's what you yeah. say? Yeah, I can finesse love at first sight from the scriptures, yeah. Well, I disagree with you. I, I, I don't think there's love at first sight. I think there is the idea of like a- Adam and Eve. You like what you uh, you like what you see. You like what you see. I don't think it was. What do you mean by love at first sight? It was, it was just definition of terms, basically. Like it my, was presented. It, it, it was presented. And, Adam. You, and you love what you saw. I said, love I at says first this sight. Is, it was Literally like, this the is first your wife. sight. You, yeah, and the first sight, love. Boom. Like it doesn't get any more. All, you, you tell me I'm wrong. It doesn't get well, any more on, clean. Hold, than hold that. on, hold on, hold on. First of all. Is that how scripture says it though? No, no, no. I'm saying it sounds I like can, you added your I, own. I said you, I literally said yeah, I but you are, but bro, the that's the point. You are forcing yours into scripture. You're but finessing it. it. Well, did, did, does Adam love Eve or not? Did he not love Eve? Yeah, I mean, but did they tell you did they tell you that was first sight? Did you tell yeah, you what literally what, when what, he saw he said listen, I saw and he said this is the bone of my bone. Uh, like this exactly. again. He said that's this is the, the bone of my hold on. He said this is the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, right? Scripture doesn't say he loved Eve. He doesn't have to say it by by yeah. by by. He literally the made a statement of facts. It was a statement of facts. She's literally the bone he, of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. He could have despised she, her. You know what it says? Because she was taken out of man. He literally okay, that's what he said. Okay, what about um okay, that's lost. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Uh, Rachel. Okay. Rachel and Jacob. Okay. Yeah. I, when I Jacob first saw Rachel, he loved mm-hmm. her. Yeah. Willing to give up 14 years of his life for the woman. Exactly. But but here's the thing though. The 14 years for the woman, right? In that sense, did it happen right there? But is that the way you interpret he it? He made a choice to do something. Exactly. He, he made first. a choice, oh, yeah, but like he had spoken. Right hold on, but he had spoken to her. By the time he made the choice. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, okay, now we're getting technical. Like, for, no, no, it's, about it's, not, it's not technical. First sight. As yeah. in, I you saw you and I loved and that you. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Yes. And I loved you. Yeah. And that was it. I said that's impossible. You know why it's impossible? I don't. I actually yeah. agree it's impossible. I'm just telling you yeah. this is how it's 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 is how it's presented. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, my definition but, of love but, will not. Well, let me say the way I believe the Bible defines love won't mm-hmm. can't fall in that category. But yeah, carry. so so you can say he loved how somebody looks. I loved her. I loved the way she looked. That that's a very specific thing. You can love how someone looks, right? And that's fine. But in order to have the love that we're talking about is loving them for everything the good the bad the ugly right and that takes you to actually get to know someone i agree um that's why you can get you can see someone right and not automatically fall in love with them you can, like, you can love how they look like oh man that, that girl you looks you great like that their appearance is different. exactly I, I got you I'm exactly yeah. and and guess what if they are 
if their personality meets their parents, oh, that's love at, at second sight. <laughs> you know, so the point is, you know, um, when you have those two things, then it works. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is I, I want to just point out something. It says, do not love the world or the things in the, in the world. It is not our first interaction with the world that makes us love it. You know, in order to fall in love with the world, you must have interacted with it enough. You must have, you must have seen some of the beauties of the world. Like we just talked about, right? You see someone the first time, right? Hey, you got to like how they look. So you've seen the beauties of the world and you have decided that those are beauties. Then all of a sudden, you like what the world is saying. And then you find that you're now in love with what the world has to offer. So it tells us, says, do not love the world, all the things in the world. I love how he says this. The world says all the things in it. But you think the things in it are the world, right? You know, and I kind of see this sometimes in scripture, right? How there's an emphasis to clarify just in case you want to find an escape. Someone could say, well, well, technically I don't love the world. I just love the things in the world, though. You know, I love what the world has to offer. I don't love them. I just love what they give. So he makes it very clear that all the things in it. And mm -hmm. then he now goes where it says, for all that is in the world. It boxed you up. Yeah. Exactly. Because he knows that it is really the things in the world that, that people love, not just mm -hmm. the world itself. Yeah. Right? So, but when you love the things in the world, you love the world. It says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. So what the world gives. When this happens, brother, that begins the fall of ministers. Um, over time, what we'll see is this. As time goes on, you know, a minister will slowly start getting attracted to the world. And what that means is this. Instead of them to focus on the word, right, for growth, they use the word as a tool to teach. Or they might use the word as a tool to get what they want. So you have two different people, right? You have those that are actually teaching you True doctrine, right? But the word is a tool. So they, they are not subject to the authority of the word. They are seen as a tool for control, for power, like I said. So the word becomes a tool. It's not, it's not the word of God that we bow to. It's a tool for control and power, right? Why? Because they want the power that they have seen in the world. They want that thing, right? Yeah. You know, or you have a situation where someone uses the word of God for sexual gratification, you know, they use the word of God to manipulate people to gratify their flesh. Now, the issue is when someone falls, right? Many times we go, was that ever a pastor? It could be because we see First John two fifteen tells you, do not, you know, do not love the world or the things in the world. It says, if you love the world, it says the love of the Father is not in you. You know, it's like. They could have started well. They could have started fine. And then fell in love with the world. You know, who, who was it that uh, uh, Paul was talking about that said left him because he, he fell in love with the world? Demas. Demas. Yeah. It says Demas left him because he fell in love with the world. This was in 2 Timothy. Yeah. He left him because he fell in love with the world. Demas was a fellow minister. <laughs> left him because he fell in love with the world. That's what happens. People fall in love with the world world but then they don't fall immediately mm -hmm. you know sometimes it grows and grows it starts little by little and little and it grows you know um i don't know if you have anything to say here because I, I i want to talk about what we can do right no first of all I, you know i read something i was I, as i was okay. getting ready for this conversation i read something from a website that kind of talked about what uh billy graham uh set up for himself to make sure that he didn't okay, fall into yeah. some of the straps. Let, 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 me, let me enter so that then we'll segue there. Yes. Uh, because obviously, think about the, this topic, it will be obviously one-sided to focus on just the, the fallen. Um, I, I look at it like this, because I look at, okay, we, we have a whole, we have a cloud of witness of men of, men of God who have fallen throughout history. Mm -hmm. And it's always alarming, it's always concerning, it should... For various reasons. And then we now begin to say, well, well this person man ago, well, this person not a man ago. And my, my thing is, I look at those who haven't fallen. And I begin to ask, what, what, what did they do 
that these other didn't do like what, what like why the stark difference like you have people who obviously by all accounts because when we talk about fall we're not talking about their private life because we don't live with them their wives live with them and the mm -hmm. devil knows like the devil and the children and, and the and the and the devil the wife and the children typically are doing they know your private life okay but we are only privy to what comes public which is why these people that we read about is after years it's like wow he felt like my, my guy he's been fun then, then we read oh this has been happening for like the last 20 years kind of thing then we we're all kind of amazed so my point is we are only privy so that you said you something you said that I, I i have to be honest with you i still struggle with like embracing the fact that we have men of god who still like watch pornography till uh, i'm not saying it doesn't happen it it, it is very is a, is a struggling thought like man like and you're still ministering like bro seek help you know so so anyway that being said so men of god the many people who have fallen in their private life who just haven't seen it okay great but what i'm trying to understand is the men of god who haven't let me just list a few that i that i like you know, um, and that these people are all old. They're all old babas. Some of them have passed away. Leonard Ravenhill. And I'll just mention some of the things they did. Like, the people I respect. Leonard Ravenhill. A.W. Tozer. Uh, Zach Ponin. Um, David Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Some, some of the people, people don't may not know who they are. But just Google them. These so, are... brother, unless the man is dead, I don't <laughs> want you mentioning him. Because here's the problem, right? Okay, people don't feel alive. I, I would have Punin. mentioned Zach Punin. Ravi Zacharias. If, if, if we're talking about all these people, right? I, I okay, would have so I should, I should only mention people who are still alive, right? No, no. Mention only people that are dead. Okay, fine, fine. Leonard Ravenhill. My God. Mm -hmm. A.W. Tozer. Uh, David Wilkerson. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to go I don't want to go too far. These are just people coming out because these are people that kind okay. of... Yeah. But these men, my God. Like, these... The, Aside from the fact I didn't respect him too much, but now I don't know your private life. But they, we, we have we don't we haven't heard a pimp. No, we're not saying these people didn't have challenges. That's not the issue. I'm just trying to understand like what kind of life did these men have got live that precluded them from the the same proclivities that like like the things you mentioned. These are things that all ministers have to contend with. Like we all have to fight against these. Let's call it three headed dragons, right? Money, sex and power all minister this is your warfare and don't take it lightly what did these men of god do um that I, i'll use leonard ravenhill i like that baba his emphasis he's a he, he, he's he, he, he yeah he, he, he i was going to say paul washer but he's alive but I was, I, he has a paul actually back up paul washer learned from him paul washer was like a student so so if you know paul washer is and you see how he is in terms of like being broken and being like 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 having a deep fear and like he wanted to be sanctified before like there's a kind of i don't know i can't say for certain the people who fall i'm not saying they didn't have this but what i, what I do know about these spec men is we it's consistent and this is what paul was saying in first corinthians chapter nine where he says one thing I do, I beat my body. I bring in some subjection. And that what that tells me, that tells me a man who's aware of like, and it says, lest after preaching to others, I be a castaway. Like somebody who's like, I, I don't want, I don't want to take an L. Right. And so when I, when I listen to David, uh, Leonard Ravenhill, the, the man is like, just lay before the Lord. It, 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 there's a, there's kind of like, a, I, 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 I'm actually at a loss of words. But the que the main thing I'm trying to draw is like, why the stark difference? Like these men of God, right? It, you, you couldn't find anything in them. It's almost like when the Bible says, I think it's John 4, 30. The prince of this world comes and finds nothing in me. What, what, what did they do? And then why here it's like all kinds of things happen. And not just all kinds of things, like things like Paul would say, even the Gentiles, like we don't even hear this among the Gentiles, right? So like, why, what, what's that stark difference? And I believe... The answer is what we can hold on to. Like, hey, whatever these Babas are doing, even though they're still talking about grace, they're still, you know, because, you know, you can be legalistic and it's like, you know, but these people are still balanced. What did they do um, to, to uh, oh, R.C. Sproul? He, he's passed on. But these people, like, they're almost like bl blameless, obviously, like in terms of like public, private, they may have some things. What did they do? And that's what we can learn from. We should, we should, you know, and that's what everybody should we should we should we should be so focused on 
on the reality. And I think some of it is because what you mentioned, I think we have a over ministers have a over um, inflated um, opinion or uh, we have this over. What's the term? You said it in the beginning. Like we we just feel like nothing can touch us as opposed to be like, yo, everything can touch me. I'm a high under the blood kind of thing. You know, anyway. So you wanted to segue into what we can do. Go for it. I just want to. Yeah. Get my chest. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, th I think that's good. Uh, the reason why I want you to talk about any men that are alive is this. Right. Um, it's like. You know, it's really to testify to the journey of a, a man, right? The journey must have ended. Right. And, you know, and, you know, uh, that's part of what we're talking about here, which is this idea of like, when we think people, we've arrived at a place where these things cannot touch us. Yeah. So I want to show you what Billy Graham did, right? Now, this is a, a little thing, you know, from, you know, Billy Graham and stuff, you know. Um, it's part of. Uh, no, I think I have it here somewhere. Let me see if I can get it. Modesto Manifesto. Yeah, the Modesto Manifesto um, is right there. You can uh, want to go check it out. It's it's actually written out. You know, Christian Christianity today. This is a uh, manifesto wherein he addresses, you know, everything. Uh, because what what was happening was this, right? There were a lot of ministers that were falling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So let's read this. It says, for example, consider Billy Graham and his team, Team's Modesto Manifesto. Billy Graham saw that many failures of other evangelists. So he mm -hmm. said with his, and this was like in the, was this 50s or whatever. So he said, so he met with his team in Modesto, California, and he drew a plan to avoid these traps. Number one, to avoid the temptation of sex, Graham made a rule never to be alone with a woman other than his wife. Mm. Number two, to avoid this temptation of money, Graham took a set salary and practiced financial transparency. Mm. Number three, to avoid the temptation of power, they decided never to never criticize other pastors or exaggerate their numbers. Now, mm. this one, I think that is a thing. I agree with this part. I, I don't know about this. But the point was this. Those were things that they said for themselves to make sure that they wouldn't fall into the trap. The problem is this. Many pastors are not setting for themselves standards. There is this mindset and this walk of like, I cannot fall. Mm -hmm. I am telling you that that's a trap from the enemy. I'm literally telling you that that's what the devil wants you to believe. That you cannot fall. Because it gives you this self-confidence that you should not have. It gives you this concept and this idea of where you're confident in your ability. Instead of you to set for yourself standards. Set for yourself clear standards that you can stand for. I will not do this. I will not do that. Right? I will not be in this kind of a situation. I will not be in that kind of a situation. You know. So, um, let me tell you some of the things I am doing for myself. Um, I, I realized this years ago. Yeah, and my wife is aware of this. I am naturally very weird around women. Um, I am naturally very weird around women in general. Um, hold on, give me a second here. I'm getting a call. And I know, right? Should you answer the call, right? Um, oh, you need me? Yes, Dami. I'm on the podcast, so you're alive now. Okay, cool. I will call you afterwards. Okay, good. Hey. Life of a pastor. Um, okay. <laughs> so naturally I'm, I'm already kind of odd with women in general just uh that i know my wife you know i'm very very weird i'm very awkward um not because i cannot not be awkward but because i choose to be awkward because i just think it's you know um because i i've been by the grace of god i i have i've worked with uh, you know with young ladies in ministry for a minute and i have seen the ups and downs in a sense i have seen when you're in ministry and someone and but this was when i was a single man at the time when you're in ministry with someone or you're working together on something and then the person gets attracted to you because you're leading the thing and i have seen this happen so i learned a long time ago to try to keep a distance you know still be there and be accessible but also have a weird you know what i'm saying a distance let's put a little bit of barrier here just just slightly right just so that you know 
um, you don't read into what I'm doing. You don't think I'm flirting with you when I'm not, right? You don't think so. There's all these things. And I believe that this is something I've realized a lot of young pastors, even pastors a lot of times they don't think about. Um, trying to understand, like, listen, you are in this place of authority. So some people are looking at you like you're somebody special. Uh, and if you're not careful, that looking at you as someone special become, can become attractiveness. It can start getting attracted to you as the person. You know, um, so for me, I, you know, uh, and I, I want to know what you, you know, when it comes to this, in order for, so let's talk about sex. To avoid the fall of sex. I have said this before and I've told my wife this. I, I tell folks in, in, in the church, if they ask me about this stuff, I don't trust myself. I am not that confident in, in, in who I am because I know that in my flesh, I am very weak. So I do not stand on the person, oh, look at me, I can do No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. It is by the grace of God. It is not by my power or by might. It is by the grace of God. I do not depend on myself or trust me. I know me without Christ is nobody. Me without Christ, you wouldn't even have to try. I'll be the one hitching on you. What's up, girl? How you doing? You know, something. Me without Jesus. So because of that, I personally... I have set barriers for me. As a pastor, I won't have a meeting, you know, with you, a, a woman, in a closed room. It will not happen. The door will be open. Or there will be another man there. Or, you know, my wife will be there. Or whatever, right? The point is this. I'm not going to have... I am not meeting you one-on-one -on -one in Starbucks. I'm not doing that. <laughs> You know, um, you're not going to just come to my house and, oh, pastor, I'm coming to your house. No. Why am I doing this? It's not for you. It is for me. It's for me. You know, sometimes, right, I, I, you know, I said this one time, right, in the church, right, you know, uh, I was talking to some ladies, you know, and I said something, I said, you know, even when it comes to a new member, you know, except if it's a very specific thing, I don't take a girl's number and save it in my phone, even if it's a new member. Somebody else can do that, you know. I have people I have called that I have not saved their number. I didn't save it. So I wouldn't know that that's their number except if you're in a WhatsApp group or something, right? Simply because I am taking those for me, not for you, for me. You know, and when I use this word fear, it's not actual fear. It's just a concern of mine. My concern is this, that after doing all of these things, I become a castaway. After doing all of these things, what ends up happening is this. I fall and I insult the name of the Lord. I embarrass yeah. who Jesus is. That, that to me it. is my biggest concern. That, 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 that's it. It is my fear. It is the one thing I'm going, eh, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. You know, I'm good. Because, you know, so that's when it comes to sex. So, that, so Russell, what do, you, what, what, what do you do to avoid, avoid that uh, as a minister? Let me just start with what you ended up with. That's it. That's the motivation there. I, I said that before. I, the constraints I put on myself. Some people call my own too much. I, I remember one time we were sitting on the table somewhere and one of the brothers, <laughs> somebody was commending me for my celibacy. And one of the brothers looked at me and said, how do we know really? <laughs> he just seemed it was too good to be true. And it's okay. It's okay. Like you can, I, you know, I, point is i i'm the constraints i put not just the sexes that's that's what you're already far i'm talking about at the eye gates this is me now i and the lord helped me this is something that i learned when i was like way back when i was still when i first got converted became a new christian in college it's the same system i implemented till, till today some of them i'm not going to even mention because you know like, actually i'm just going to mention like okay number one is the eye gates I just don't watch certain movies because I, my mind, I already on my mind is it's like, it's, it's like, it's, I'm visually stimulated easily, but right? like what I see, I remember. So eye gates is, is like, I'm more, it is like some people have, they even make fun of me. They call me like, I like to watch Disney. It's like, thank you. This is me. Okay. Okay. And I've been doing that for like the last two decades, right? Two decades. That just sound long, but yeah, but this has helped me. 
Now, I'm not telling people to do this as a lifestyle. I'm just saying these are just, and what this has helped me do is to help to dilute the influx of, of stimuli in that sense. That's just one. Secondly, what that helped me do is pornography site is just, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a non-starter. If I'm, if I can't even watch this Ray R movie that I want to watch, this is me now. Because when I was worldly, that's all I wanted to watch, right? And so this is how I do something. So even to, to this very day, I didn't even entertain that, let alone, let alone the actual physical person now. In terms of women, <laughs> you know, it's like, you say you're awkward. I'm not, it's not mine as awkward. It's, it would seem, I would seem judgmental. But for me, that was just a defense mechanism. Like, I just saw you as a problem. Right. And then what that what that kind of did was it made me come off as but it's okay. I'll rather take that L from you, okay, and save my neck. And I've been doing that for years and and I've gotten some scars with that. But these are just in, in line with what you're saying, these are basic wisdom. Like we all know ourselves. You, you know what you can do. Even even something as simple as like, you know, and I, I told someone this the other day. Okay, let me say this. <laughs> I must put myself on front street. Now, I'm, this is something that I started when, when I was in college. Right when I was first going, this is just I believe the Lord gave me these wisdoms. Okay, you, you, when I say you're gonna laugh now, so a woman's walking. Okay, we all know a woman's walking. When she's coming, we know how she's shaped. Lift your dirty hands. Okay, now my hands are clean, brother. My hands are clean. They're not like by yours. your by your, what you just told me today. I know they feel thin now. <laughs> by what you told me today, I know they feel thin. <laughs> so so I know, like this is I know that. For instance, now, depending on how, a shirt, like, the top a woman's wearing, if it's loose-fitted, right? If she bends down to pick something up and she's in front of you, you're going to see some things now, okay? Things that, things that the Gentiles ought not to look at, if you know what I'm talking about. From that very day, if I see a woman like that, I, I've trained myself to, well, God has helped me to look away. Till, till, till this very day. It, it seems very awkward, like, why are you looking over here? It's not because, you know, it's like, why are you... So there's a lot of the little things I do like that, that would just seem weird to people. But these are things that God has just helped me. And now to go further, I think about 30 years. I'm like, can I keep this up for 30 years? Like, Lord, can, can you, can you solidify this for like, like, can you make this, you know, and by the grace of God, I have some testimonies, some personal testimonies that has vindicated me. You know, I think I've shared this before, you know, but all, all, all I'm saying is not, this is not to like boast in anything I did, but it's just fear. You know, like there's a scripture that says, um, um, Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, you know, it, it it doesn't really apply per se, but the idea of constraint, like I constrain myself in a lot of things. There's a lot of things I, I don't do. I don't know. My daughter's coming. If, I, if I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone. I'm talking. I'm talking to uncle. Okay. Come back later. Okay. okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Are you done yet? Almost, almost. And when do you stop? Soon, soon. At four? Sure. <laughs> um, hey, let me let me let me wrap up. So my point is, so there's a lot of things I can't do. This is me now, and because I've seen like the people who I respect, they they, they have constraints, they have boundaries. Now, obviously, it's tough, right? Sometimes those boundaries are low water, but point is, boundaries have to exist. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble now. Because if you just, if you're free, I'm a free, I'm a free person. It looks like that. But I've got some boundaries that I can't even begin to share. Something, you know, the thing is legal. It's okay. But these things have saved my neck till today. I, I, there's, a, there's a brother who I know, you know. Um, okay. Anyway, you know, this was back in college. And, you know, he had challenges. And I was just trying to show him the, like, bro, like, this is the things I do. You get me? Like, just and he'd always struggle. And I'm not saying it's a belittle. It's just like, I, it works if you embrace the boundary for the ultimate goal, which is you want to please Christ. Anyway, I, I know I've kind of rambled up, but, but when it comes to sex, bro, if you ain't got no, if you don't have constraints, like aside from the fact that yes, the Lord can make you strong and all like, cool. But if you don't have actual things that you cannot do, like I cannot do this. Hey, you know, there's going to be some problems, you know. So I just pray that Lord will keep this for the next. I don't know how long I'm being on earth, but as long as I'm on this earth, like keep that. Um, you know, Especially when you're not married. I'm talking about me now. Okay. Now, when you're married, there's a different, there's a whole different thing. Like when I'm married, there's a whole different, diff different dynamic. 
But when you're not, oh, good Lord. Anyway, sorry, I know yeah. I won't talk for No, 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 no. That, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know, to add to that, another thing that I do, you know, is, you know, and sometimes it, it makes, even as a pastor, it might come off a little bit cold, but it's not really cold. It's a, maybe because you were expecting me to do it, but then I don't do it. I don't typically, you know, um, I, I wouldn't typically like, you know, um, comment or give you props on what you're wearing if you're a woman. Um, you know, and it, it, it's and it's interesting, uh, except for my wife, like I wouldn't really give you props, except if maybe what you're wearing, it's like, what's the word? Um, it's it's maybe an example of what that women should wear. Right? Then maybe I would say, oh, that, that looks nice or whatever. But even then, I'm always trying to avoid doing that. Because the point is, you know, it's probably being a pastor of a young adult church, right? And or a, a church with young men, young women, right? You have a lot of young women that wear a lot of interesting things. You know, these things are cover up, but some women want to show their shape. You know, or some women have different things. So, you know, it's so it's almost like a landmine everywhere. And being able to know clearly, because that's the thing. Some pastors ignore the landmine and they don't see really because they're not being honest with the landmine. They pretend like it's not a landmine. You have to understand it is. And walk carefully through it. Because then you are deliberate in your action. Many times the things we don't focus on are the things that kill us. So we don't focus on this, but then so we accept more of it. We start accepting more of it. Oh, sister, oh, that's a nice dress. Oh, it's, oh, it's good. It looks, you know, you're showing your shape. Oh, thank you, pastor. Next week, she comes again, very tight, walks by you. Sister, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love the top. Thank you, pastor. And before you know anything now, she starts dressing for you. Okay, well let's let's move on to money. <laughs> no, let's but, move but, on. but but this one more thing is that like sex is I was who was I talking to? I can't remember. It's like this is the most the, But you know what's and, so funny, and, brother? Let's not it's not even physical sex. I think that that's another problem that people have when we have this mm -hmm. conversation. They think the fall is the physical sex. No, I'm Many times before the mm -hmm. pastor even had physical sex with the woman, he had fallen multiple times with her without doing it. And, and that's the whole point. That's why even the dressing thing could become an issue because you have others, you have different temptations all around you, and you are not rejecting it; mm -hmm. you're accepting it, right? Yeah, yeah. you're not casting you, down those. You're, exactly, you're, you're not, not casting not down. You're, you're, not down. you're not turning your eyes away. Yeah. You are accepting it. Yeah. You are glorying yeah. it. But then you go in your mind. Oh, it's just in my mind. You're something, and that's no, what happens. No. Nobody mm -hmm. knows. Nobody knows this, so nobody's getting hurt but me. Lil Levin. And that's it. And then obviously you get used to it. You get used to it. You yeah. get used to it. And before you know anything, you know, you're holding the person's hand too long. Before you know anything, you... And it becomes a whole... Because yeah. you ask yourself, how does someone go from here all the way to the fall? It never it happens overnight. Yeah. It takes a while. It takes a while of accepting, 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 accepting. And then one day you're mm -hmm. in the murk. And I, I, I want to say this is that... I mean, even though, yes, the... Me personally, this is just me personally. You might disagree. I don't even fault the person at all. I put the onus on me. Like I don't like you might wear what you wear because yeah, I don't know. It, it's it, it's not about the person. It's about what you do because that person has their own issues too. That they that's need what I'm to saying. Out. So I like cause oftentimes because you know the, sometimes people are like well t they need they need to like t t time my brother t time out your brother like yes they need to but you like what what uh, you like what what are you just like. D d you can turn away you can't do this like why can't you know like so i put a lot of onus on the me yeah. as the first point and then obviously god willing <laughs> we can someone can address it you can address it but ultimately it's because what, what are you going to do when you go outside like okay forget about you in the pulpit now forget about you in mm -hmm. church okay fine what, what, what happens when you go outside what are you going to tell everyone to like what aren't you going to leave or aren't you going to do something so i so I, I say the training is here like here like i need to like lord whatever wisdoms or whatever practical tips you can give me uh, so last point is that on the on the issue of sex it's like it's been and obviously not just the act 
it starts before. But the whole thing, especially, especially married folks, because a lot of the pastors, a lot of pastors are married, right? I would say most, mm -hmm. most pastors on average are married and they still fall. No, in, in terms of like to pornography or it's like, and I find that to be so, it, it's bothersome. It's like, yeah, but I, my brother, I, it's, it's because these are dragons that we don't slay. That's well, the thing. I, I, like, I want, to, I want, okay, the, where I'm going with like, I agree. Where I'm going with it is that the, the ultimate thing is that sex bar. Like that, it's like, this sex must be a, such a thing. If you're going out, you know, people are going to prostitutes. People are, mm -hmm. you know, stealing it from yeah. another. It's like, if this thing is so great, like, I, I think, I believe one way to mitigate this is to kind of bring it back, like, faster. I don't know, like in your house or in your, like, you gotta like deal with this thing here. Like, figure out why you're not able to, whatever. Sometimes it's perversion. That's what pornography does. So, mm -hmm. whatever that is, you gotta deal with it here. Like, I don't want to, okay. I don't want you going out here. Yeah. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, let's fix the broken walls. Let's fix the broken altar of sex in the house. Lift your hand. Let's fix that here as opposed. So, I believe because it's also not really touched in church, if we're being honest, in our African churches, Let's yeah, but yes, you know, who's going to touch you in church? The pastor that is struggling that, with that's it. What, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's that why, is why we're, that's why we're, that's why we're here right there. Lift your hands. Amen. What, what you know, the point hands? is this, the pastor, who's, it's not going to touch it. And then, you know, when he goes for, you know, ministers conferences or whatever, they don't, will, they will not touch you because they have other right. things they want to touch on. Right, right. You know, yeah. so this is the reason why I said, I want to, I want to just, now it's, I'll tell you this, this episode is not really about the people watching right now. It's about the young man that will come across this 10 years from now. Yeah. Or whatever that is, right? And it's about, because I truly believe that this needs to be put out there for us to understand this. You are not immune. Don't think you are immune, brother. Don't think you're immune, sister. You are not immune. Your job is to understand the standard of Christ and your job is to stand. Your job is to put in systems to make sure that you don't fall victim to the trap. I promise you the devil has traps all around. He knows what we seek. Some people, sex is not their issue. Nope. Money is. So let's look at money. That way. Let's look at money. So money, like I said, there are three major things. Sex, money, power. Money is, is the next thing, right? And it's a thing. Now, I'll give you my own take on what I, you know, uh, what I have done. So this was even before I knew about It's so funny how similar to what, uh, you know, um, now... For Billy Graham, he says to avoid the temptation of money, Billy Graham took a set salary and practiced financial transparency. Right? So that's what he did to avoid the temptation of money. So from his church. Me, personally, to avoid the temptation of money, right from the day I came as the pastor of the Way Fellowship, I said, I don't want to be added to the account. I don't really want to know, you know, only recently have I started to know about what's happened just simply because... You know, we seem we seem to have been behind bills. So I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, how did I know about this?" Well, you didn't want to know. <laughs> so, when it comes to the money, right? I'm not involved in it at all. Even if when someone says someone gave me the other day and said, "Oh, if I could last week Sunday," they gave me cash because the the you know um, the financial person wasn't there, right? So they gave me the cash if I could hold it. What was given, right? And she would say, oh, can you, can you hold it? Can I leave it with you? And I said, no, take it, just drop it in my office there. Leave it there. But I don't need to, I didn't open it to count how much it was. I, d I don't, that's the thing. I'm not involved in the money. One more thing I said was this. Now, this is me personally. I want you guys to understand every one of you or everyone that's involved in ministry, we all got to make our decisions. But you have to understand you set things in place so that you don't fall into the temptation of love of money. I said this, I will never take a I will never take a paycheck from the Way Fellowship. That is that's a church I that's a church I pastor. If you want to check it out, the Way Fellowship on Houston. I said the Way, I said the Way Fellowship on Houston. <laughs> that was terrible, Russell. You didn't even catch it. You see. Okay. The Way Fellowship Houston, right? You want, I think uh that's what it's called on Instagram. Uh, I would hope you know, but yeah. Exactly, right? So I said I would never take a paycheck simply because in my reasons are for me but you know since i'm here if this might be helpful to a brother or sister i said this my reason is this number one i never want whatever i say for i don't want to ever believe i'm saying it because of the money i never want you to th think i'm teaching anything because of money if i tell you to give 
I want you to understand that you're giving. It's not because I want your money, right? I want you to understand if I tell you that you you should um, that suffering um, is part of the Christian life. I don't want you to think, oh, you know, I, it's not because we are we are paying him. That's why he he's he's saying this. He's not. No, I want you to understand that we're gonna stick to the word, you know. And when money is taken away, you know, there's clarity. I got my example from Paul. The fact that Paul refused to take money from the Corinthian church. Um, right? It was the Corinthian church, right? Just making sure I'm right before I say something wrong. Um, to me, was just uh, was beautiful to me. Because we know that it, it's not like he had a great job in a sense. He was a tent maker in that sense, right? But also, he had to travel a lot. And, and you know, and he had to do all of these things. I mean, so other churches were supporting him. But for this one church, he didn't take money because he he never wanted them to think that their money influenced what he was telling them. The same reason I have for not taking money in the church I pastor. But that's me. But you know what's crazy about my stance? It's crazy because my stance is not just now. I said I will not take money whether there are five people in the church or 25,000. You know, because we just saw that get out twenty five thousand. Come on, bro. Imagine, <laughs> imagine their Titan offering, that's, brother. That's, that's imagine their Titan handle. offering. <laughs> that's difficult to handle, man. Twenty five thousand is very difficult. Bro, you are talking about management. I'm talking about their Titan offering. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, their Titan no, offering, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the logistics of twenty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Titan bro, that's life. what we care about, man. That money, bro. That's what we care about. So, but the point is this, and 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 this is where I'm going. It's like. That very, for me, it takes me away from that idea and that concept. That fear of falling in love with money. Especially when it comes to ministry, you know, loving money and start doing things for money. Which is part of the fall of ministers. You start finding people doing, because that, that was probably one of the biggest fall of our, uh, our Driscoll. Where to? Power and money. That's it. It wasn't sex. He didn't it fall because sex. of sex. Right. It was power and money. Mm-hmm. You know, because typically when money comes in, people start changing, right? You know, now, you know, then it also produces power. You start seeing people bend things for money. They start changing things for money. You know, they start, you know, or they start misusing the money of the church. You know, they go to the, st- they have the card of the church, they start spending in the place, places and doing different things like that. So people give, then you find, you know, this is how you can have a pastor get robbed in the church. And they, they make up with, it's not over a million dollars from his jewelry. Well, no, 400,000. Oh, I regardless, thought it was over a million. Still, no, 400K. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Re- regardless, that's still a lot of money. That's, All right, cool. Because I thought it was a million. 000? But 400,000, oh, yeah. dude, that, that's a lot too. Yeah. Imagine. That's a quarter of a million. That's insane. How can you be wearing in, in, in there? I think someone robbed jewelry. you in the church, in your jewelry, and they have over four hundred thousand dollars from you. In what? Do, what do you have in your house? If that's no, what I mean, you watch the church does, on the Sunday, he does have a lot of money, you know. Because I don't. You saw, I don't, did you see his videos? Yeah, I did. I did see the video, but then it, there's also thing where he seems to have stolen from a lady, or whatever, ninety thousand dollars or something like that. No, no, he whatever. has like he has like five cars, Bentley, and yeah, of Phantom course. and all that. So he's, yeah. he's got money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and they call him the Gucci pastor. He likes Gucci. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. The point is this, but that's what happens. Money, you know? And because I read something else where it says, because it's things showing up about the, the man now, right? And, you know, and he only came out because somebody robbed him. Now he has come into the limelight. It turns yeah. out that he, he, he defrauded, or at right. least his accusation that he defrauded a woman for over $90,000. You know, and then there's other stuff, right? Um, so. The point is this, but that's what happens when you start loving money. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, I, you know, some people go to the ministry for money's sake, right? Yeah. But but the point is, if you're not there for money's sake, you have to protect yourself not to fall in love with these things, or not to fall into the trap of money, because that's what happens when things are small, right? Is different. Mm-hmm. When yeah. things are small. There's no money. Everybody's, everybody's like, oh, it's, we're doing this for easier. the love of Jesus. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. Oh, we're sweating for Christ. Hill Great. songs. Hill songs actually is good. Beautiful. That. Yeah. Great. And now money starts coming in. People start giving. There's all these things. Now suddenly now, you're in, a, in this place where you are you can get wealthy now over the church, right? You can do yeah. the, the... Ooh, doors are opening everywhere. 
Now, before you know anything, scandal. It starts changing everything yeah. about you. Scandal comes out here, you know. You know, you you start using the church money. You start believing like, oh well, the house that the church has is really your house, and it's just it's crazy. Anyway, there's a whole thing there. Yeah. I I I, th I would say that with the way, okay, let me back up. One of the reasons why these things often happen is you kind of see in you kind of see how the person embraces and because the gospel itself has everything we need. Like if you just if we just follow the the teachings of your apostles, how they preached and lived, it would we would do well to avoid a lot of things. What am I trying to say? I'm saying is oftentimes you can see that we have modernized or we have kind of tweaked the, the life of the gospel in such a way that it doesn't look like what they did. So therefore, we wouldn't get the same results they did. I'm looking at like today, 2022, our modern churches, kind of like the secret, sen secret sensitive ones. They're almost like a breeding ground. It's almost like a time bomb. Like It's built in such a way that like something's going to happen. Like You're going to get a scandal or there's going to be some abuse or something because this isn't like like what you see here. If it doesn't happen, hey, praise God. But it's almost like you've gone outside the scope. There's no protection now. Like this isn't what the apostles set up. This isn't the structure and such. So, so because of that, <clears throat> we're seeing more and more and more. The idea of this. Um, okay, so for me now, let me just get my own. For me, uh, one of them, like one of the, I guess my my mentors who who taught me like. like he was one of the reasons I understood the gospel, right? When it comes to money in him, and he's, he's in his 50s, but when it comes to money in him, he does not want to see money. I'm talking about I, we, he doesn't want to see money. Like, if you somehow send him money, he's going to be upset with you. Like, I, I, it sounds, and he's been doing this for a decade, but it sounds, he's just like, he's one of the weirdest people in the world when it comes to money. I don't understand it. You can't give him money. I'm not talking about, you know, the Bible tells you to give honor to him. Like, yeah, it's, it's good to honor people. Like, so this is not the issue. Him, I don't want your money. Like, you can't give me money. How do I know? I've been trying for the last eight years or whatever. I have never given this man money because he ain't going to give you his bank account. He, he doesn't want nothing. I think I've only given him one gift in the entire. And that was only because I bought the gift and he couldn't reject it because he's already bought. You know? mm -hmm. um, but as far as the money, he doesn't want to see you. And if you give him money, he's going to block you. <laughs> That's so, nice. oh no 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 he's it but but he's rare but my point is i learned from him and so when it comes to the money and i agree with you i like your what you said there is because these are all leavens like it's easy for me to say i don't have a church of twenty five thousand, so i get it right but i don't think i would even get a church for twenty five thousand with this kind of attitude you know because it's like when it comes to money i don't want i don't want to see you because I've seen that the love of money, what did Paul say in, in first, first, first Timothy 6? He says, those who desire that very guy in and of itself as, as pierced men would like that. So, so the trivial nature, this is not as a, this is not like a minister, just talking about believers, let alone being a minister now, right? So when that when you see them dollars and you see access, like the devil's a bad devil now. <laughs> Oh, oh, and side note, funny thing is about that first John. I'm sure you noticed, like the whole first John love not. Th that's what the devil offered Jesus. That's what he offered Jesus. Th those three things, same thing, same thing. And of course, he offered Jesus the same thing. And so I see all that, and it's very difficult for me to have a very lax attitude. So when it comes to money, like, and, and yeah, so I, I'm with you. I, I not it's 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 almost as bad as sex. It's, it's almost they're equal because it calls money a god for crying out loud, mammon. There's no other, there's no other gods. Well, sex given a name, maybe not sex. But listen, you you can God. serve you can serve anything, and but the easiest thing for us to serve is, is things. We love to serve things because money is not just paper; it's anything that you treasure in that sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so anything that could you know, any form of currency or anything that could be traded. That you know, what I'm saying, and and so that is part of like because you know there were times wherein you could trade goats. Mm -hmm. Trade go I trade my goat for your apple, but then you have a lot of goats. Now you think you're better than everybody else, yeah. because you you can trade for whatever you want, right? 
So, so and it, it's and it's just that concept of loving the things of this world, really. And and money is like a major thing in this world because it gives you that status that's different, yeah. right? It puts you on a pedestal that's different. It gives you that power that men want. You know, which takes us to the third thing, power. Now, there's a question here, so I don't know. Let's answer this question before we go. Is there a difference between liking money and loving money? So, Russell, what would you say? How would you answer this question? Yeah, if I asked you I, this question? I, 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 I think I understand what's being said. And I, I think those words like and love can sometimes almost be interchangeable. But I think the idea being is, I, th and this is what I'm hearing. Is it possible for you to just use money for its purpose and not be taken over by it? That's, that's, th that, that would be the distinction that I'll make. So if that's how you define liking something, but hmm? is that, is well, that, well, 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 like, well, I like, thing. like I like you're, food, but you're, I'm not. You're assuming what the person means. Uh, that's why I'm, that's why I'm literally disclaiming so i'm giving you how it's like i mm -hmm. like food but i don't love yeah. it to use the definition of i'm not like uh I'm like if i'm not gonna how should i put it i'm not gonna um serve food like you know what i'm saying like food is not my master how do i know i can fast like just as an example like i mm -hmm. can literally fast from food so i like it yeah it tastes good the salmon yeah. it's a mean salmon now but loving it to that point, so in, in terms of money, it's like yeah. Well, it comes down to can you live without it? If you can't live without it, you love it. Well, let, let's 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 pause now. When you say live without it, in mm -hmm. this world context, like you can't literally make any exchange. So if we're talking about like in terms of using it for what is intended as a tool, if if, if the purpose is this right, if I asked you and said, hey, listen, brother, um, you know, because you're saying, oh, you know, um, I need money. You know, and um, if I if I came to you and I said, well, oh no, not that I came to you. If the Lord told you I want you to be poor, not have money, like the rich young ruler, basically. Yeah, or go trade all you all the money you have away. If yeah. you are going, uh, but I need it. I I, and you you don't yeah. want to in that in that context. Yeah, you love money. Yes, yes. Uh, the point is, it's not about whether you know whether you have money or not. You could have money and not love it. You could not have money and love it. It's right. not about the having of it. It is the loving of it. It is if if money is simply just a tool, right? For example, now a simple thing I use is this: to eat rice, right? I need a spoon, right? Oh, for but without for. a spoon, can I eat rice? Yes, you can use yes. your hands. So. To f have a place to live, I need money, right? Mm -hmm. But without money, can I have a place to live? Sure. You can live anywhere. Yes. That's, that's the point. The point is this, because if the Lord is providing all my needs, I don't need money for the Lord to provide them. But guess what? In our understanding and where we are, right? Yeah, we need money for some of these things. If, if You know what I'm saying? If I am going to pay for it, I need money to pay for it. If I am going to pay for it. So if the Lord wants me to pay for it, Lord, I need money to pay for it. But the point is this, though. You know, to do the will of God, I don't need money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, doing the will of God does not involve money at all. And sometimes well, that, I agree with that. That, that is 100% true. Because that's what the scripture shows us. Yeah. So I, I agree so, with that. So, so, Akin, I hope you understood what was just said. I saw you left this comment before that final statement was made. Uh, it says, no more I can live without money because we need money. However, there are levels to love money. Yeah. There are no levels to love money. You either love money or you don't love money. There are no levels to it. Uh, scripture tells you not to love money. <laughs> it didn't tell you to have levels of it. Um, the problem with us is this. Most Christians don't because of how we grew up, right? That's why when some of these we're saying, right? When we say it, it sounds crazy. We don't, un we don't have a point of reference. So because we don't have a point of reference, it sounds insane. Here's the thing. Many of us grew up in churches wherein people love money, your parents love money, everybody around you loves money, right? But everybody's talking about it. So all the prayer points, everything you hear is about the love of money. Your church, your pastor is teaching you to love money in everything he's saying. It is your right to be this, that, that. That's all we know. So then you now scripture tells you not to love money. So now you, you're trying to now make that make sense in your world system. But it doesn't because your world system was already wrong. You know? The point is this. Money, and Russell, I think you said it, but I want to clarify because many times we are assuming that people have the understanding that we have when we're speaking. Money is a tool as your spoon is a tool. That's it. 
You know, but money does not dictate where your life goes. Money does not dictate what God will do with you. Money does not dictate how much you are pleasing to the Lord. Money does not dictate any of these things. If God wants you to go to a place where you have no dime, you would do the will of God there without a dime. You don't need a dime to do the will of God. Now, can God use money to do his will? Yes, he can. But he can also use, he can also choose not to use money to do his will. Does that make sense? Because it's a tool. But many times we put God in a box and think the only way that the church can is with money. The only da da da. No, right? God can use money. And but then again, here's another thing, right? And this is another thing where some people go, um, you know, you have a situation where in, and I think it's James that addresses because I think there's such a balance here that people struggle with sometimes. Uh, somewhere we see somebody going through something, right? Or let's say the church needs, you know, needs to do something. Um, you would you would have you would have someone say something to the effect of, "Hey, brother, hey, sister, the Lord will provide." But they are not thinking that the Lord has already provided, because they are there. Russell, that makes sense. There, the provi- God has provided the provision. Through with them. the said person that's already there. Yes, because you are speaking. Because you are here, because you have the provision. The proof so the of Lord God's provision is, you. That is you, you right there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, But then they go, the Lord will provide. Almost as if they expect a supernatural money to come from heaven. Mm-hmm. Provision. No, no, no. This is what James says. That that in itself, that, that itself doesn't make sense. You can look at that stuff and talk about that that's faith. That's not faith. Because faith says the Lord has done it. So if the Lord has done it, and I have it, he has done it. Let me give it to you. And it's so, such a fascinating thing. That, that's one of the things I probably struggle with. Let's see. Uh, um, says, I think, I don't know way of explaining it. It's if you place money ahead of God, if money occupies your heart more than God, it is see. Yeah, yeah, in a sense. But then the question is, this, what does that mean, though? Because that's another thing that people look at it. They say... <coughs> You know, because some people will say money doesn't, but then guess what? And th- I guess the thing, maybe someday we'll talk about it if today's not my last episode. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> you know, we are to challenge our worldview with the word. You know, that's what's fascinating about Christians. They don't challenge their worldview with the word. They expect the word to fit into their worldview. I want to challenge your worldview with the word of God. For example, people will say, um, you know, except if money, you know, if I treasure money above God. But then the same people don't make it to church on Sunday because they are going to a job. <laughs> the same people, right, they are never in Bible study because they are going to a job. The same people are not, but then, but to them, they don't think that is putting money in front of God. They don't see it that way. So then you start realizing like, oh, their definition of these terms are different and I think that that's what's so fascinating about human beings, right? Everybody defines terms the way they want to and then use that definition to now make the point. Well, this is what I think this term means. Thereby, if you don't, da 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 But what does that term mean biblically? It's not about what you think it means. What does it mean? So, that's the whole thing, brother. Uh, a man that does not have contentment with the lead to, they have a... Okay, good. All right, so let's go to the final one so that we can round up. Power for ministers, the third, and probably you know what's so funny? This one, even though it's the third, it is probably the things that we seek after the most. But it's it's subtle because the first one is blatant. The first one, sexual immorality is blatant. It's in your face. You fall into sex. Oh, that's a scandal. The last one, even when you fall into it, people don't see it as a scandal. Right? Until it becomes too much. Then it becomes a scandal. When you fall in love with power. What typically happens when you fall in love with power? You, you start abusing it. You can't, you can't help it. You abuse your power because it's part of the whole thing. It's no longer a, a, about just doing the will of God and making sure that the people are agreeing in the Lord. Making sure that you set that. No, no. It becomes about ab- you start abusing people. You start thinking that you are the king of kings. You start falling into the line where you think that everyone is here to serve you and you not to serve them. You forget that you're supposed to be the servant. You start thinking that you're the king. 
that is a problem that is a problem um now i'll tell you part of the things that i have done by the grace of god um initially before i, I became the pastor of the way fellowship what we decided to do initially was to split out we were to have a board of elders and have all those things so that you know um the pastor is more focused on the word but then i realized when i came in you know as a pastor that system wasn't um it wasn't conducive for our church and why why wasn't it conducive for our church it wasn't conducive for our church simply because in order to have elders you need men and women that are completely sold out right but not sold out to the work but sold out to christ in the word fellowship prayers and all that stuff right you need people that are already grown mature in jesus thereby they can you know something true prayer they can bring under you know a church but when you don't automatically have that's right with a certain church and stuff to that effect that's something you have to build that's something you have to get to you know um so what we have is we have a board that's in charge of the church with ministers that are not pa- part of the church that are outside of the church so that's one thing we do have then you know we have leaders in the way fellowship that you know um where things are discussed i typically will not come out and and here's what's funny right with the way it's structured right now i can make decisions clear decisions and say this is what we're doing i move on right but i choose and i make a deliberate effort not to do that deliberately not because i can't do it i make a deliberate effort when i sit down and i want to make the case for something right so i typically make the case for something for example now we have a whole leadership group now that we've formed of different ministries so we have every head of so-called department that we call ministries we don't call them departments anymore there are two things we take away from our lexicon or our you know uh, dictionary which is this uh departments and also volunteers we don't have volunteers in the way fellowship if you're going to be a volunteer, you, you're, you're, you're not really full-time in a sense. You're just kind of there. But every, every person that is not a volunteer is a laborer or a worker, right? Because it's our natural job. We believe that we are children in the house of God working. And I think once people understand that heart, heart is different, it's not just, oh, I'm volunteering, I'm helping out. I don't need you to help out. Your father does not need you to help out. He needs you to be a servant. He needs you to serve. Um, so anyway, that's the whole thing. Um, but we have all the heads of these ministries together now that formed the leadership of the church in a sense. Um, we have a, you know, we have a board, we have three leaders, then we have all the leaders of the church. Now, what is interesting was this. Every single time we've met, I have given them the opportunity to change all the programs of the church. Except the only thing they can't touch is the word and prayer. Apart from that, any other program we're doing, they can, they can change. You have chosen not to do it. Right? Why? Because some of these things were put in place before some of them came into leadership. So if they feel like, hey, something should change, right? They can, they can change it. Now, why is that? For me, that is done so that I don't get to a point where I start thinking I am the all in all right i am also accountable to these people um now as we are going there are certain things that has to be done that you know i have to put my foot down and say we got to do this but then i will make the case on why it has to be done you know and but and everyone is given an opportunity to disagree everyone is given an opportunity to make the case on why they don't think it should be done and at the end what would typically happen depending on what it is there's a vote Except if it's something that I truly believe the Spirit of God is saying we should do. If it's not that, there's a vote on it. Right? I want those, you know, I want people to feel like uh, you know, I want people to feel and know that they are part of, you know, of the church, that their voice are heard. They are the church together. So that's what I do in order to to take away the emphasis being on me, like as if I'm the all in all. And thing I let people understand too, I am not, this is not, children say, Joel Guinness ministry. 
Another thing is like, I don't believe I am supposed to be here forever. You know, I am the pastor right now, so I would do the will of the Father right now. But I can be replaced tomorrow. And I'm okay with that. You know, or I can find myself in a different place tomorrow. And a new pastor comes in. But while I'm here, we're going to do the will of God. You know, but I don't think this is my place. Let me build a castle to my name. Why? Why? And then I die, and, and then what happens to the castle? It crumbles. <laughs> I don't know. Those things don't. But I think that that's part of what happens with power, typically. Um, you know, I'm, because of my personality, I'm very direct. And also, I'm a, what is it called, a type A? I'm a choleric. So I'm, I'm a, let's go, let's go, let's go. So if I double down, that could be a whole thing. Is the, oh, someone said, is the way fellowship subject to external authority? Yes, it is. Uh, we have a board. We actually have a board. Now, the only one thing that the board cannot change is the word of God. If a pastor comes, if somebody comes in and says, oh, we don't like what you're teaching. My whole thing is this. Show me where we're wrong in the word. If you sure, can show me where we're wrong in the word, you know, we'll change. Apart from that, the board can change whatever it wants. Um, so we have a board. And also, we are also under Yazim, Yazim Ministries, uh, Yazim of Redeem. So we're Redeem Church. Uh, so we also, yeah, so we have, uh, yeah, so we have external authority that's not just in the in the church. So it's not just, we're not just a enclosed little body that's just doing whatever they want. We have people that we're, um, that's, you know, that we're under in that, in that sense. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Russell, what about you? Do, do you have anything with power? A- any, anything that's helped you not, 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 not to love power? Especially really when it comes to this podcast. I run from it. I mean, I think you can attest. I run, I run from it. I, I, I have a, I think I have a pro- proclivity towards being possess- poss- poss- possessive. Yeah, I can, I can be. So I've just, de- I've just developed a pattern, and obviously, to, it's not always the best, but that's just my default. Uh, you, yeah. Any kind of position, I run from. That's just it. I run forever. I'm cool. Um, yeah, any title, whatever, I run from it all because I've seen, a seen, I've seen, I've seen, because growing up in church, I've seen, it was like the A, a the inevitable abuce and, mm-hmm. and there's a particular kind of disposition. When, when abuse is about, is about to happen, there's a, there's a way that that person starts to be, it doesn't just happen overnight. You can kind of see the buildup. So I just learned to, to, I mean, that's, you know, some people can be called false humility, but I just run from it because it's like, I, I don't need to be, I don't, I don't need to be like, which, and now also other thing is I've also discovered or uh, tried to do my stuff. Anything I do, I try to do stuff that will not be seen kind of thing. So mm-hmm. that, that was the other thing, because it's like stuff that can't be seen because power is at the end of the day is influence. That's really what True. it is. It's trying to gain influence. Right. And so, it's, so, it's so a remember, drug. Remember huh? the conversation we had where you're talking about Christian influences? Remember what I told you then? Because you were like, oh no, Christian influences. I was like, that should not be a thing. <laughs> I, I can't remember, remember that conversation. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember you were, probably right. Yeah. Because yeah. you were defending, like, oh no. I was like, bro, that should not be a thing. Christian influences. Why? What are you? What, let them see Jesus. But your point was like, but we're still influencing people, though. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm still right. I'm still correct. You still, you are uh, still influencing uh, people. Uh, you, there's uh, nothing you, you can do about it. You are, you are, you, no, 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 no. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, I, I'm right. I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. It's not whether you're influencing A pastor is influencing people with the word. Right. But the point yeah. is, who are they looking to? Not you. So you shouldn't be that standard. Jesus should be. Christian influences many times make themselves into the focus. And I'm that going, no, that would be, step that would away. Be the distinction. That would be the distinction. Step away. And that's why I'm saying they should not be so. Because when you talk about Christian influence, you're using the, a worldly word, uh, a word. That is not a Christian word. Imagine if scripture called, uh, 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 you know, you know. Imagine if Christian called, uh, uh, if the Bible called uh, 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 Paul uh, uh, an influencer. No, no, so, hold on, so, no, no. Christian hold on, hold on. Is, hold on. Let me ask a question. What are you referring to here, brother? Tell me, Baba. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the distinction well, is, Christian Christian tell me, what are you referring to? Influencing youth to Christ. Worldly uh-huh. influencers influencing you to yourself, them to you. That's that's the distinction there. So yeah, I get yeah, it. but but I said I still think that that's a problem. I still think that that's a problem because I don't I, I don't think I don't think we should use a a, a worldly word to define Fine. a Christian thing. For example, in this case, right? 
It's like someone will say, well, a pastor is an, is an influencer. So that, that's where it starts happening. A pastor is influencer, anyone that preaches the, an evangelist is an influencer. Because, no, that's crazy, right? Because an evangelist brings the word and then steps aside. Uh, Russell and Chosen were right. And listen, listen, listen. All of you can say what you want. All I'm of right. you can say. All I'm of you can right. say what. You, I will still not agree about this ever. <laughs> I'm not right. I'm not right. So, so listen. I'm still saying man's. I'm still saying man's. I still disagree. I, 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 and here's the thing. I understand what you guys are saying. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I just think the concept shouldn't be used like that for a Christian, because sure. the Christians group. Goal should not be I want to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. In that sense, the Christian goal should be I just I just want people to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to show people Christ, right? And I think that that's a whole different thing. Anyway, uh, so you run away from power. That's what you said, right? Yeah, like because it's here's my my approach is simply this from Scripture. Yes. Everybody that the Lord wanted to use, and, and it might be flawed, but this is to save my neck, and I I pray to maintain it for everybody that God wants to use in Scripture. It was yes. clear. They couldn't run from it. Like they tried mm -hmm. to, for mm -hmm. good or for bad. Good example, mm -hmm. bad example. Gideon, Jonah, uh -huh. Saul in the New Testament. God wanted to use Paul. Jesus Christ wanted to go get the fishermen. Like, like yeah. he comes. So, so for me, it's like, okay, I don't want what you don't want for me because I see this potential there. And because if the Lord is the one who does it, I trust that that which I've committed to his hands is able to sustain. So that's just my approach. And I, and I pray to maintain that um, because I see that I don't want, look, it will be, it will be unwise for me to have this cloud of witnesses of failed experiments and not learn from mm -hmm. that. I've seen this. I'm like, okay, mm, I think it's best to go this approach. And that's kind of what it is. Yeah. So power mm -hmm. is a drug. Once you get a taste of it, you, you wouldn't know when you add more. Now it's kind of like you pouring sugar in your tea. Like, oh, that tastes good right there. You, bro, that's like five scoops already. So uh it's 11 and i try to just stay f i only want what the lord gives me that's it you know and yeah. that sounds kind of like super spiritual but that's just my disposition and i hope to maintain that until christ comes yeah, yeah but but that's where it should be though you should only be you shouldn't be working the way you're called to you shouldn't you shouldn't but the point is but don't to run away from the call and say you're running away from it. It's like I, your, I run away. No, 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 hands, no, no, no. Listen, nah, nah, bro. Nah, nah. Your I hands run away. Open. He gonna have to take my legs out i don't care what listen, anybody says your hands should be open because that's the thing because that's the message i used to have with like cool. you know, I, I i just want to be an evangelist and just i just give the word and then just i didn't want to be a pastor if you had asked me i'd be like no um but hey the way i found yeah. myself where i am it's, it's crazy hey it worked out but, that's my point but, now but well, that's you, you have this mind and then he's gonna take your legs out okay yeah so well, well well i don't want him to take my legs out. i just want him to show me i, I don't want i don't want to not be creepo and then somebody else <laughs> will be to, to to the place i, I don't want to i don't want to be a jonah yeah, i don't want to yeah. spend the time in the fate sure. of the world before i do the will of god um but yeah but uh you know our brother paul said uh first corinthians well i think you spelled it wrong brother but i get it first because it's in level one where it says imitate me as i imitate christ yeah. right um oh, now man. i understand like i said before I get it. All I'm saying is, I don't think we should use the term that the world uses for one thing for Christians, because I, because imagine if they were calling Apostle Paul an influencer. That is what he's saying. And I'm sure you know somebody. What I'm saying right, it sounds crazy until you start seeing it happen. Paul start talking about, oh, you know, Paul was the first influencer, or Peter was the first influencer, or Jesus was the first influencer. Then you start. Then I think you guys would realize how gross it is when people start saying it. And when you start hearing, because I could just see a, a, a pastor, Todd, what's his name? Who, who that? Todd White. No, is it Todd White or Michael Todd or whatever? I can see oh, Michael Todd preach Mike that. Todd. Yeah, Michael Todd preached that. I could, I could see it because it sounds crazy, but I could see it. Oh, you know, uh, you know, you want to be an influencer like Jesus. He, the first influencer, he, he he came and he influenced. And when they finished he teaching, people like, that's clean. Like, you have to kind of squint. <laughs> like, he is not, he, like, you, you, we're going to have to, like, break down the nuance like why are you breaking down the new ones just tell me that it's not flat out wrong. that's the thing it's not flat out wrong. like you're influencing oh, okay. people what what okay okay Light listen listen that's not world. to this topic that's not to this okay, topic fine, we'll probably fine. do a part, right right we'll right 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 part two we'll probably do a part two where we cool where we cool. have this conversation out where i can show you guys how wrong you guys were no problem. and uh all of you all of you include those people that are in your corner hey we'll, they we'll know i'm right <laughs> all right guys so 
you know, uh, today's topic, like I said, it was, it's so important to me because, um, like I said, it's one of the things, you know, and if you watch the entire thing, hopefully you get the context of what I'm saying now. It's one of the things that I fear. And when I talk about fear, I'm not talking about fear as the world fears. I'm talking about, you know, a cautionary thing for me, where it's like the fall of people of God, wherein you've glorified Christ in your words. You have pointed people to Jesus. There are men and women that have come to know the Lord because of you. And then there comes a day when all of that comes crashing down. Not because the Lord made you crash. Not because the enemy somehow got you in. No, no. Because you, you know, your flesh, you allowed your flesh to rule over you. And then it was finally exposed to everyone. You know, my prayer for every one of you that listens to this, that watches this, is this, that you never, that that never happens to you. That you follow Jesus on a day-to-day basis, understanding what the enemy is trying to do. Sex, money, and power. That, it, it's very simple. The love of three of these things will bring you down. You yeah. cannot avoid it. It might not be revealed today. It might not be revealed tomorrow. It might be revealed when you are 80 years old. After you built all of this, you have a whole country of 25,000 people. You mm. have done all of this. People have That's come to... The worst. There, are people, there are people that were born in the church and, mm. you know, I've, I've seen you as there. And then one day, all those things comes crashing down. That's mm. what the devil likes to do. He yeah. likes to exalt you, put you on a mm. pedestal so that by the time he pulls you down, there are many that come with you. Mm. It's not just you. You know, um, so... So, uh, so I think it's very important, brothers, very sure, important, sisters. Yeah. Set for yourself boundaries. Put for yourself things clearly so that you don't fall into this. Let us pray. Um, you know, let us pray. Maybe next week I'll be here or maybe Ross will be here by himself. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Father, we thank you for fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for understanding. Father, we ask you, help us, Lord. That everyone, every brother and sister that has partaken, listened to this conversation, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to fall. Help us, Lord, not to fall. Help us, Lord, not to fall into the lust of our flesh. Help us, Lord, to fall into the desires of this life. Father, Lord, we ask you, help us, keep us. Keep us, Father. Help us to follow you and chase after you. Lord, that if any of us are struggling right now with one or two things, pornography, Lost in our hearts, love of money, love for power. Further, help us, Lord, to submit these things before you and help us to repent. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. God bless each one of you. Uh, All right, bye.